Is this Theodore's mom? I'm Sophia, his girlfriend. Oh, hello, Sophia. Yes, I'm Theodore's mom. How do you do? It's a pleasure to finally speak with you. I'm so sorry that we haven't had the opportunity to speak more often or have some cozy dinners together since Theodore introduced us. I've heard so many wonderful things about you from Theodore, and I'm eager to learn more about you myself. Yeah, both me and Theodore are always swamped with work, so we don't have much time for these kinds of get-togethers. I hope you understand. Indeed I do. You come across as a decent and kind-hearted young woman, Sophia. I can't express how fortunate my son is to have found such a wonderful girlfriend in you. I'm so proud of you and my son. You're a great couple, and I know that you will share a great time together in the years to come. Oh, girlfriend! What are you talking about? Theodore and I are getting engaged very soon. Which means that I will soon become his fiancé. Really? Congratulations! I'm so happy for you and Theodore. I had no idea that you were planning to get engaged. I'm totally unaware because Theodore didn't tell me any of this. Theodore is a very cheerful boy, and he always loves surprises. I'm sure that he's been planning this for quite a while, but keeping it a secret in order to surprise me later on. How long did it take you two to come to this amazing decision? I'm really excited for you and my son. I know that you will have a wonderful life together. Not too long ago, actually. While we were having a romantic dinner in a fine dining restaurant, Theodore suddenly got down on one knee and proposed to me. I was so overwhelmed with joy and happiness at his proposal that I said yes without even thinking. My dear, I am so happy for you two. I can already picture the two of you sitting down for dinner, enjoying each other's company, making memories that will last a lifetime. It brings tears of joy to my eyes and reminds me of the old days. The old days when you were together with your ex-fiancé? What's his name? Jacob, right? Oh, my ex-fiancé? Why did you bring up his name all of a sudden? I already know what happened between you and Jacob, so there's no point in hiding anymore. Theodore told me everything, and it's embarrassing. What are you talking about, Sophia? What is embarrassing? The reason why you and Jacob split up? What else could it be? You were severely burned in an accident, which resulted in that hideous scar on your face. Hmm, that must be why Jacob ran away. He couldn't stand looking at the monster like you every day. I mean, who could? I knew you were trying to cover up that scar with makeup, but let's face the reality. It's not enough to make you any less disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, at least you're trying, right? That's half the battle. Sophia, why are you bringing up my painful past? I'm trying my best to be positive and move on from what happened. It might be funny to you, but it's very devastating to me. I hope you didn't mean to hurt me with what you said earlier. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Your fiancé ran away one day before your wedding, and you're still trying to pretend like it's not a big deal? Your story could be a bestseller. I can say the title now. Runaway Groom Escapes Monster Bride with Scarred Face. <laughs> I would appreciate it if you would stop mentioning what happened to me in the past. It's not nice of you to do so, and it's really hurting my feelings. Oh, the irony. Jacob didn't even know you were carrying his child when he ran for the hills like he just saw a ghost. But, again, I don't even blame him. I could possibly put up with sleeping next to an ugly, scarred-faced monster every day. He probably had night terrors just by looking at you. Look, I've been nothing but kind and understanding to you because I see you as my soon-to-be daughter-in-law. But I won't tolerate your disrespectful behavior any longer. If you continue to act this way, I will have no choice but to talk to Theodore about it. Suit yourself. Theodore will soon become my husband, and I know for a fact that he will always take my side. After all, I'm the one that Theodore's going to spend the rest of his life with. Not an old hag with a hideous scar on her face like you. I'm quite confident that sooner or later he will take over your house and kick you out for good. Then, you'll have no choice but to rot on the streets. 
But hey, don't worry, you can always resort to begging. I'm sure your hideous mug will be sure to elicit some pity from passersby. <laughs> That's it. I have reached my limit with your disrespectful behavior. I will not allow you to continue to talk to me in this manner. I will be informing Theodore of your conduct, and I'm sure that he will reconsider his engagement with you. Oh, please. As if you have any say in the matter. I've already made all the arrangements, and I'm not about to let you ruin everything. I'm the one who paid for everything, so there's no way the engagement will be called off. Not in a million years. What? I can't believe that you and Theodore planned everything out without even telling me a word about it. I know that Theodore is an adult and he can make his own decisions, but I'm still his mother and I would have liked to be involved in this important decision. Well, now that you know that you hold no importance to Theodore, I suggest you move on with your life and stop bothering us. You're not welcome in our family and you certainly won't be welcome at our engagement ceremony. You'll only embarrass us and make us look bad in front of the guests. So please, do us all a favor and stay away. What are you talking about? Now I even got excluded from my son's engagement ceremony as well? What kind of joke is this? You heard me right. And it's not a joke. Of course you're not invited. What are you thinking? Your ugly face would scare the guests away. Theodore and I have planned a very formal and elegant ceremony, and we don't want you to ruin everything. You're not worth our time or effort. What is this all about? What will you tell the guests if they ask about Theodore's mom? Oh, don't you worry about that. I have everything under control. Although Theodore's real mom, which is you, won't be there at the ceremony, he will still show up with a mother, and even a father. And how will you be able to do so? Ah, oh, piece of cake. I've already come up with a solution that would allow us to avoid any awkwardness and ensure that engagement ceremony goes off without a hitch. I will hire a man and a woman to pose as Theodore's parents. This way, Theodore will still have parents present at the ceremony, and I won't have to worry about being embarrassed by his ugly mom. No, I will never agree to this. This idea is sick and unacceptable. It's like you're telling my son to deny his own mom, and that also means that you're lying to everyone. And why on earth do you think that me and Theodore will ever need your approval on this? I've already made a decision, and there's nothing you can do about it. Why? Because I'm his mother, and my opinion also matters, especially when it comes to something that has to do with me. <sighs> Look, do you really want to help your son? Well, of course I do, but... Then, stay out of our engagement ceremony altogether. I don't need your negativity or your drama. I just want everything to go smoothly, and I know that you're only going to make things worse. So, please, just do us all a favor and stay away. <laughs> That's all me and the other need you to do. And if you do as I tell you, then everything will turn out just fine. Listen, I'm not going to waste my time here arguing with you, because I see this conversation going nowhere. I'm going to have a talk with my son about all of this, and see what he has to say. Hi, Theodore. Do you have free time at the moment? There's something we need to talk about. Oh, okay, Mom. What is it? It's about your girlfriend, Sophia. We spoke the other day, and she informed me that you are planning to get engaged to her in the near future. Is this true, Theodore? I'm really confused. I haven't even met her parents yet. It's true, Mom. I didn't tell you right away, because I wanted to give you a nice surprise. But now that you already know about it, then I guess I don't need to keep it a secret from you anymore. Oh, okay. That's great news, sweetheart. Don't get me wrong. However, I was a little surprised by the way your girlfriend addressed me when we spoke the other day. It was quite strange, to say the least. What do you mean by strange? Did she say anything bad to you? Well, she kind of did. But first, I want to be clear that I'm not trying to badmouth Sophia or gossip about her. I just wanted to share my concerns with you about the way she spoke to me the other day. I hope you will hear me out and not think I'm trying to be malicious. Mom, it's okay. Don't be too concerned. 
I promise I'll do everything I can to help you. If there are any misunderstandings, I'll talk to Sophia and see if we can clear them up. Oh, thanks, darling. I'm not sure what I did to upset your girlfriend, but she was very rude to me when we spoke the other day. Sophia told me that she doesn't want me to attend your engagement ceremony. She said that I am ugly with my scarred face and that I would scare the guests away. I am deeply disappointed that Sophia would say such hurtful things to me. What? She actually said that to you? How could she? She knows very well that you're my mother. And she shouldn't have treated you that way. I know, son. She even made a cruel joke about my past and how your father left me because of my scarred face. It was incredibly vicious, and I had to fight back tears to keep from crying. Mom, I'm so sorry that she texted you those cruel things. I had no idea she could or would do something like that. It's completely unacceptable, and I will have a word with her right away. I'll make sure she apologizes to you in person, and I'll let her know that her behavior is not welcome in our household. I'm so proud of you for standing up for me, son. It really means a lot to me. But please, don't be too hard on Sophia. She's still young. Sometimes she says things without thinking about how they might hurt others. I can understand that. Just talk to her gently and help her to understand that what she said was wrong. I understand, Mom. I will be careful with my words, but she needs to understand that her actions have consequences. No one should ever be humiliated for the way they look. It's an inhumane act that should be punished accordingly. I know, honey. What Sophia did to me was wrong, and I understand that you want her to apologize. But I don't want her to feel like she's being forced to do it. A genuine apology should come from the heart, not because she's being told to do it. Besides, you and Sophia will have your own place soon, so you won't have to worry about dealing with this old lady. <laughs> I know there are a lot of stories about mother and daughter-in-law conflict, but I promise I won't be like the mother in those stories. I just hope that if Sophia and I have any misunderstandings, it won't affect your relationship with her. Please, don't worry. I will make sure that Sophia knows what she should do. And by the way, you are welcome to attend our engagement ceremony. We are currently busy preparing for it, but I will make sure that you will be the first one to receive an invitation from us. Sophia will personally hand it to you. Thank you for your kind words. It warms my heart to know that you care so much for me. I'm really looking forward to the day you and Sophia are engaged. And I know that it will be one of the happiest days of my life. I'm so proud of the man you have become. You are kind, caring, and responsible. I know that you will make Sophia very happy. What's up, old hag? Still having trouble getting that paint out of your dress? <laughs> you are despicable, Theodore. I can't believe you were cruel enough to do such a thing to your own mother. I thought you were supporting me and actually defending me from Sophia. But it turned out you were just lying to me? Of course. Why would you ever think that I would take your side instead of Sophia's? I mean, you're just my mother. Sophia is my future wife. Who would I rather choose? It should be obvious. To be honest, we thought about not inviting you at all. But then we realized that would be too easy. We wanted to make sure you knew exactly how much you're not wanted. So we decided to invite you to the ceremony and humiliate you in front of everyone. That was a stroke of genius. All the guests had a good laugh at your expense. Oh, it was priceless. You call yourself my son? I don't think so. If you were my son, you would have never done that to me. What you did was unforgivable, and you should be ashamed of yourself. How should I be? Goodness, I've never laughed so much in my entire life. The sight of you standing there like a buffoon, hoping to make an inspirational speech at my engagement ceremony, only to be thrown a bucket of red paint and feathers onto your head, was the chef's kiss. Hands down, the most epic moment of the year. <laughs> you... you're not human anymore. The fun didn't stop there. As you were struggling to navigate your way out, you tripped over your own feet and fell flat on your face. And don't even think about blaming me for that. I'm innocent. 
Seriously, my stomach still hurts from laughing so hard that day. It was hilarious. I even recorded the whole thing on tape. So if you ever want to relive this wonderful memory, just ask me and I'll send you the video in two seconds. You know how sensitive my skin is and you threw a bucket of paint on me anyway. The paint irritated my scar and now it's itching and painful. I'm going to have to see a doctor. How could you be so cruel? What a pathetic old woman. You're not only hideous, but you're also a weakling. I'm only trying to help you by giving you a little lesson to toughen you up. I'm sure you'll appreciate it when you're out there in the real world, being trampled by all the other tough guys like me. You're welcome. No need to thank me for that. Why didn't you just tell me to my face that you didn't want me at your ceremony? I wouldn't have bothered showing up if you'd been honest with me. Not only did you embarrass me in front of all your guests, but you also hurt my self-respect. You have completely lost my trust, Theodore. I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive you for this. And that's exactly what I wanted all along. I knew that if I had just told you that I didn't want you at the ceremony, you would have been nagging at me, demanding answers. I've known you long enough to know how much of a nuance you can be. That's why Sophia and I decided to pull this little prank on you so that you could learn your place and never show up in my or my fiance's life again. And to my surprise, the plan worked out even more beautifully than I expected. <laughs> you and your fiancé really are something else, aren't you? What can I say? A match made in heaven. Congratulations. You two deserve each other. Well, thank you, old hag. I know you're angry at me, so why don't you just come out and say it? Don't try to hide it anymore. Instead of crying yourself to sleep at night, why don't you throw your tantrums at me and give me the best insults you can come up with? I'm sure you'll find that it's much more satisfying than bottling up all that rage. But I'm warning you, it will only do you more harm than good. And why should I even do that? I don't want to waste my time and energy on an ungrateful child who can't even differentiate between right or wrong. Oh, looks like Miss Scarface is still trying to act tough, huh? Suit yourself. And by the way, I officially announce that from now on, you're no longer my mother anymore. I'm cutting all ties with you. To be honest, I'd rather be motherless by birth than to have a hideous mom like you. What? Cutting ties with me? Are you serious? Yeah, you heard me right. What's so surprising about that? Don't tell me that you didn't see this day coming. I mean, have you ever looked back and seen for yourself what you have done for me that was at all good? You're always making me feel embarrassed whenever we walk side by side. Whenever my friends or colleagues ask about you, I always have to divert the conversation so that I don't have to mention your name. Why do you think I never even bothered having you pick me up after school? Because I knew that my friends would make fun of me for having an ugly mom. If I had known that I would have a monster like you as my mother, I'd rather be dumped at some orphanage and have foster parents to take care of me. So now you're finally showing your true colors, aren't you? Your mask has fallen off, and I see nothing but an ungrateful child who's willing to cast his mother aside when she's no longer of any use to him. Fine. If you insist on continuing down this path, then I have no right to tell you otherwise. But be warned, bad deeds always come with consequences. So be prepared to face the karma that comes your way. And when you do, don't come crawling back to me, because I won't be there to save you. Hey, old hag. Why is it that all of a sudden, my colleagues started to turn their backs against me? My boss even threatened to give me the sack. I told you, bad deeds always come with consequences. But you chose to ignore my warning and even disowned me as your mother. Not only that, why is it that Sophia even came up to me asking me to say sorry to you all of a sudden? Even her parents are furious and told me to apologize to you. Otherwise, they wouldn't agree for me to marry Sophia. What is going on here? I really don't understand. I thought everyone was having a good time that day at my engagement ceremony. Didn't they tell you the reason why they suddenly want you to do that? I think they must have done that, but a person like you would never listen to anyone other than yourself. Well, yeah. They said something about a fire accident in the past that made you go through a severe burn, leaving you to live with that hideous scar for the rest of your life. 
What's wrong with that? I already knew all about it. And did they mention the cause of the accident? How should I know? They were scolding me, so I just tuned out. I didn't want to hear any of that. It wasn't worth my time. Well, if you had heard the whole story, you would know that I was the one who saved the lives of both your fiancé and your future mother-in-law. You what? What are you babbling about? Are you just daydreaming again? Because it seems like it. Seriously, Charlotte, before I only thought you looked ugly, but now you're also delusional? What a great combo. Yeah, keep talking down to me all you want. If you're really that determined to give up on your marriage with Sophia, which I doubt you would, right? What are you implying? What do you mean by saving their lives? What are you hiding from me? Just spit it out already. Well, if you insist on knowing the whole story, then I'll tell it to you right now. I was living in the same apartment building as Sophia's parents when the fire happened. Sophia's mom was pregnant at the time and had hurt her leg, so she couldn't move on her own. Coincidentally, I was also carrying a child, but I couldn't leave her there. The firefighters couldn't make it in time, so I rushed into her apartment myself, covered her nose with a wet towel, and helped her to safety. In the process, I was burned, which is why I have the scars on my face today. Luckily, the babies were unharmed, and they grew up not knowing how close they came to death that day. I think you know who these babies are, right? W what Tell me this is a joke. There's no way such a coincidence would happen. But why didn't you tell me about this sooner? I didn't tell you about the fire because it was a painful past that I'd rather forget. You see, your father left us not long after the accident. He couldn't stand the fact that I was disfigured, so he abandoned us and pursued his own happiness. I was devastated, and I didn't want to relive that pain by talking about it. Uh, I... I didn't know all of this. I had no idea that you'd risk your life to save Sophia and her mother. I was always embarrassed about the scar on your face, but now I know that it's a mark of your bravery and strength. I'm so sorry, Mom. I'm really lost for words right now. I don't know what to say. You're a true warrior. A real inspiration for us all. Do you really think so? I'm still not sure if I can forgive myself for putting you in danger that day. I could have easily lost you, and the thought of that still haunts me every night. I'm so glad that you didn't blame me for what happened. No. Mom, why would I blame you for that? I'm so proud of you. You saved multiple lives that day, and you fought against all odds to give birth to me? Despite being deserted by my own father? I know I was also at fault for not telling you the whole story. But I'm not ready to accept your apology yet. In fact, what you did to me was cruel and unacceptable. And to think that I'm your own mother! It's even 100 times more cruel. Whatever the cause of my scar is, you're never allowed to make fun of me. Because it's an act of plain inhumanity. No matter our differences, we are all human beings who deserve to be treated with dignity and fairness. That's why I only forgive you if you're willing to apologize to me publicly and accept my special punishment. I was so stupid to be embarrassed of you, when I should have been proud of you all this time instead. I'm so sorry for the way I treated you. I promise to do better. If you'll let me, I'll do my best to take care of you from now on. On the wedding day, Theodore and Sophia apologized to me in front of all the guests. I also made my son and daughter-in-law donate some of their money to different charities and pay tribute to the people with disabilities or any kind of differences. The former misunderstandings between me, Theodore, and Sophia have been finally resolved and now we coexist in perfect harmony. Sophia has acknowledged her prior errors and now treats me with the same deference and love that she would show her biological parents. She always defends me whenever someone looks down on me or speaks ill of me while demonstrating her utmost respect towards me. My son, Theodore, is wont to speak of how I heroically saved him on that fateful day, which fills me with a mixture of bashfulness and contentment. However, I may have to instruct him to restrain himself somewhat and refrain from doing so as frequently, lest the entire town becomes aware of my actions. Sophia's parents and I spoke of the past, and they continued to express their profound gratitude to me, lauding my heroic deed. To be candid, the scar on my face used to haunt me, causing me to feel ashamed of myself. However, I am now learning to embrace it and live my life in a different way. I'm proud of what I have accomplished, and I know that everyone around me feels the same way.